Newton Road, named to record the Newton family, who were prominent figures in the community. Most older residents will remember Hubert Newton, who owned the village bakery. He was also, at one time, the chairman of the parish council. Originally, this was home to a row of five or six cottages called Mellors Row, named after Colonel Mellors. The old people's home, which was opened in 1971, has been built on the original site and is named Mellors Court. Cavendish Close was named after William Lord Cavendish, who was the Earl of Devonshire. He purchased the land known as Sorchy Moy Manor from Oliver Cromwell back in 1608. Warren Croft is named after Frank Warren, who used to run the Odd Fellows Arms in Church Street. In the old days, all pubs used to have paddock land, and this area went with that pub. Ermine Way was named in acknowledgement of Ermine Street, the famous street Roman Road, which ran all the way from London to York via Lincoln. The farm by All Saints Church was called Manor Farm and you could lead the cattle to Manor Farm down a track near this road which is why it's called Manor Drive. A spelling mistake resulted in this road being named Bluefield Road. Actually it should have been named Blomfield after Arthur Blomfield who was the son of a bishop. Arthur was responsible for the building of the new All Saints Church in 1880 using stones from the old St Andrew's Church and also some from Sawtree Abbey. Isn't that interesting? Bill Spriggs, or Spriggy as he was affectionately called, owned and ran the coal yard on which these houses now stand. The coal yard ceased trading in the mid-1970s and then lay dormant for several years. Bill died in 1993, aged 88, and the land was finally redeveloped in 1999, suitably named Spriggs Close. We used to go out and walk about. Now, there was nothing organised for us. We used to make all our own uh, fun and amusement in those days. We used to, I mean, to go up to the wood at Haversley Wood, we used to go up there. I mean, I can remember sometimes we'd walk up there two or three times a day to Haversley Wood, go up there in the mornings, come home and have a dinner, go up there in the afternoon, come home and have your tea and go back up there. Well, when I was a kid, where uh, the doctor's surgery is, there was a farm, White House farm, it was called muck carting time or hay car hay making and we, we kids used to if they'd let us ride on the cart you know it was lovely uh, we used to stand around and with big sticks and when the thing went round you know if the rabbit used to pop out you'd try and wallop them with the stick catch a rabbit scrumping was one of the things we used to go scrumping in the old orchards get a few apples and that in those days that was another thing we used to do raid somebody's orchard to get some apples or pears or something like that when they was in season. But uh, we used to do things, uh, I remember, as I say, Becky Jolly's shop, where it was on the front where Mellis Court is now. And coming home from school, I used to sometimes just open her door and, and she had a bell on the door. If you just open the door about a foot, the bell used to ring because she weren't in the shop. She was out in the back doing her housework in those days. and. Uh, she only used to come into the shop when the bell rung and someone went in, so I used to ring the bell and then run to get round Church Street Corner before she got there, but she used to manage sometimes to just get to the door and look out to see it were before I got round the corner. The village green was filled with um, the dodgums and the jungle speedway and the sideshows and swinging boats, because I could never go on those because I was sick, but um, all around the, the um, Fair people used to have caravans, you know, Thurston's and Fendix and Thompson's. It was great. It was a topping up night on a Saturday, they used to call it Saturday night. Education was originally undertaken at the old school hall, initially with boys and girls in one big room. The Women's Land Army Building, home to Lancashire and Yorkshire girls during the Second World War, became the infant school. The Village Community College opened in 1963. In 1972, the infants acquired their new school. Ten years later, the new junior school was opened, thus completing a very brief picture of education in sorcery. Well, that's if you don't include the Agricultural and Home Economics College, now the Youth Centre, oh, and the preschool playgroup, based in the original telephone exchange, but you knew about them, didn't you? Six times a year, residents receive a free local magazine published by an organisation known as Caresco. But who are they? 
Cresco stands for Sawtree Care and Resources Organisation. We're a registered charity based in Sawtree. We run lunch clubs and day centres for the elderly and the housebound. We also run a community print shop and try and meet other needs within the community. It was started by a group of active parishioners who wanted to take over a couple of projects already running. They were led up by Marjorie Dybeck who later became the first organiser of Caresco. The Caresco Centre was handed over to Caresco in 2001. It is such an improvement that really there's no comparison between the two. It's warm and cosy. People enjoy coming here. Numbers were dropping off in the old building because it was so cold. But here people seem to be comfortable and hopefully get a warm welcome. The whole building was dreadful. <laughs> it was an old shed that was falling to pieces nearly. Um, cold. In the winter especially, the heating will go off. And when this new building came along, well, it's like being in paradise, I think against the old one. On Mondays and Tuesdays, it's the Luncheon Club, a chance for residents to get together, have a chat and a nice meal. Joan and um, Nancy and uh, Eunice help with the food, you know. And then it's nice coming here for the company, really, because it makes us poor old souls that have all day on their own. <laughs> I can't praise them enough here because everyone is so good. And what do I get up to? Playing Scrabble, playing bingo, having lots of fun, and enjoying myself. I know it's difficult to imagine now, but at one time Green End Road was just surrounded by, well, green. That's why it's called Green End Road. But it wasn't so long ago that the bottom half was called Slough Lane. Moyne Road, named after the Moyne family. One notable individual was Sir William Lee Moyne, who was the Lord of the Manor of Sawtree Moyne and who died in 1404. A brass depicting him and his wife can be found at All Saints Church. Looking past the wall down can be the hill over which the new A1M disappeared is called Stangate Hill. Actually, the crest used to be high, but the new road has been cut through, making less of a steep climb for the traffic. In the days of steam engines, though, the driver would have to fill up the engine's tank with water at the bottom of the hill. If he didn't, he probably wouldn't have enough steam to reach the top. In 1989, Sawtree Parish Council purchased 15.1 acres of land designated to be the new Sawtree Sports Field. Local builder, Roy Green, was heavily involved in the building of the new clubhouse and the whole facility is known as Greenfields in recognition of all his hard work. Chapel End gets its name from the Chapel Houses which is situated on the east of the A1 opposite St Andrew's Church. This lane led up to them except they're not there anymore. They were knocked down years ago. This is an easy one. Fen Lane is called Fen Lane because it leads to the Fen. The Bones family were once large landowners in Sawtree and Sir Robert de Bones was Lord of the Bones Manor of Sawtree. He was also Bishop of London and reputed to have been born in the parish of St Andrews. Where the club is now, Club Car Park was a reservoir and beside this reservoir was a separate well. We used to go and fetch buckets and uh, keep it in the pantry and jug it out and that was our drinking water. It was a, a, a pump, just a pump. You used to pump your own water and uh, put your bucket over the thing and pump it up when you got your bucket full. Dad used to have a yoke with the, the bucket on either side. In my young days, people used to drink water out of the ditches. It was clear. You could see fish swimming in it. As boys, we've drunk water out of a land drain pipe that run into a dike, where it runs into a dike and runs out in the dike. I mean, we've, when we've been out in the fields and that one's been running, we'd, we'd drink that because it was so clear and so clean. That road down to the allotments there, there was a lovely ditch beside that and the water used to come right from the hills. And the water crest used to be waving in the water, beautiful stuff. The Amicable Society was one of several organisations in Sawtree providing care for its members long before the days of unemployment and sickness benefits. 
During the Second World War, their former headquarters became home to two families and in 1955 was purchased by the current owners. Modernisation includes disabled access and also inside toilets because originally you had to, well, you, you can guess. Sawtree WI was started in July 1919, so we shall be 83 years old this year. Of course, life has changed for women so much in the intervening 83 years that um, they have such choice of leisure activities nowadays compared with uh, their mothers and grandmothers. I know the Jam and Jerusalem image has stuck, but everyone seems to enjoy their meetings, so I'm sure there's a great future for us. Two Doors Down is a building formerly known as The Hut, originally a tin-roofed wooden structure, but now brick, more of a soundproofing measure than a design statement. Reopened in 1964, the Sawtree ex-servicemen and working men's club caters for members with regular entertainment, good value drink and a games room, including two full-size snooker tables, one being a 1920s Riley, purchased new when the building was first opened. On the far wall are various photographs, one showing the hut before the outer brick wall was added in 1976, and another showing a man with a horse, easily overlooked, but the reason the facility exists to this day. Ben Irish was a local landowner who lived in the manor house by the green. His main claim to fame was the racehorse he owned, Papyrus, or Papyrus as the locals say, a rank outsider which won the derby back in 1923. He gave the land on which the club now stands to the ex-servicemen of Sawtree for all time in recognition of their part during the Great War. Unfortunately, not all those who left to serve returned and this plaque on the wall provides a lasting memory to those who died. Later, the names of those lost during the Second World War were added. Like many a historic character in Sawtree, Ben lies in All Saints Churchyard. He died a month before his 65th birthday with a funeral service conducted by the Archdeacon of Huntingdon. Today, his grave is hidden amongst the grasses, but his legacy lives on, helped along by a committee who have worked hard to ensure the continued success of the hut. Sotri had no electric, no water, and nothing, no facilities really. We had a, a brick-built copper in, in the shed outside. We used to fill it up, light a fire underneath it. When it boiled, boil the clothes in. And when they were clean, you know, lift them out with a copper stick. I used to turn the handle, and Mother used to guide the washing through the mangle to the two rollers. And then, of course, it was pegged out on the line. I can remember sometimes Mother would have a line full of washing out and the line would break. <laughs> and if you'd washed them by hand, it weren't like breaking when you washed them with a machine these days. Just slap them back in the machine, you've got to wash them all again by, by hand if the, if the line broke. Because they, the lines in those days were mostly down by where the garden were, where they used to grow the vegetables. So once the line broke, they were on the garden and so they were all dirty again. Yeah. Expect. This road is named after a big green leafy thing, a laurel bush. Big deal. Did you know that they have poisonous roots? Chestnut clothes was so named to identify the close proximity of the 11 chestnut trees that stand in the area. Being fairly rare, the trees are the subject of a preservation order. Behind this cul-de-sac is a dike that runs towards the A1 motorway. An old map shows Stanch Hill Bridge under which the A1N now runs. But I guess Stanch Hill Bridge Road is just a bit too much for a mouthful. Down Close, not named after the dome, which is just a bit south of Newcastle upon Tyne, but actually named after the Durham Ox Public House, which was just one of the six pubs that used to be here in Sawtree. Despite closing down as a pub years ago, it's still here on the corner of St. Judas Lane. Aversley Road was named after Aversley Wood, which is the wood by Holborn Hills for honey allotments. Keggy Papworth, Biddy Bates, two men on the night side. Well, uh, of course there were no water toilets, just um, buckets with a seat built across the top. Well, they went uh, door to door, didn't they, emptying the toilets. 
which were all outside. You used to just go and sit on it and, and do your business in the bucket and wipe yourself. And, and you had the little square pieces of newspaper, of course, because there were no toilet rolls. And I remember that because it was all a bit shiny in them days and the print used to come off, but I always had a way of sort of scuffling mine a bit first. We always knew when it was coming round. Because there was nobody around when they thought I was about because they couldn't stand the smell. You know the old, uh, little old saying that they used to say when I was a boy, in days of old when men were bold, paper wasn't invented. They wiped the arse on tufts of grass, went away contented. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> In the 1960s, the policy of the District Council was to create two key rural centres to service smaller surrounding villages. Sawtree was an ideal choice, having excellent facilities. Hey, it even had its own village fire station. And here's the original one, home to horse-drawn tender and still overlooking the village green. But development was running rife. Well, when I came into Sawtree in 1970, I think every road in the village was just covered in mud where the vehicles from every contractor was building houses were just coming onto the village. And uh, I met this um, wonderful character, George Cheney, and came involved with him. And they said, you know, <coughs> we've got to somehow get the, um, them to stop going any further because every piece of field that was beyond was being sold by the farmers for these developers and they were just buying it up so they can keep on extending and extending outwards. Finally approved in 1976, the village plan, a 10-year plan, was an innovative blueprint document, including proposals for the posting of a formal village boundary and a capping on building preventing overdevelopment. The completion of that 10-year plan in 1976 is just being completed now in 2002, the 10-year plan. It's taken that long to develop it out, so you can see how massive it was at that time when we got it stopped. You know. Sawtree uh, was a, a little village that really had, uh, had n nothing given to it. It had no playing fields or anything like that at all. And um, we looked and looked and of course no farm or anybody was selling us any land uh, around the village. Negotiations for the new sports ground, Greenfields, was completed in 1988. One pitch, however, remains missing. A legacy to the new A1M and an agreement reached between the parish council and the road developers. They wanted um, you know, certain subsoils to, to make the foundations for these flyovers. And so um, they took it from us and made this uh, you know, wonderful lake for us because I think everybody's enjoying it now and it's great to, you know, another asset in the village. Despite the loss of one football pitch, there are many advantages. Just ask the geese. In addition to a wildlife habitat, the lake also provides recreational facilities and the welcome irrigation of the sports field during those dry summer months, if we have any. But an abundance of water hasn't always been an asset. Sorty was the last of the fence to be drained, and um, so they'd field around it. And of course, the Sorty internal drains by the old, uh, the old chairman used to say, well, it's your own fault, but you shouldn't have built on it. Everybody knows that flood, you know. So you lived with its floods. I mean, even Church Street flooded and there's little cottages there and the people there took the stuff upstairs when they, they flooded. And it was part of the, the village life before, you know, before we came in to develop it. Sawtree has come a long way. As far as major development inside the boundary goes, that's really about it. There will always be other challenges, our own full-time policemen or more facilities for the youngsters. But a village doesn't run itself. It's the parish council who deserves some recognition. A final word then from a young lady who retires from public duties at the end of this year. Sorty is a great place to be. I've been parish clerk now for over 14 years. It's been hard work, the people are great, but I'm really looking forward to being in my garden next year. 
we missed out loads. We haven't talked about the village lockup or the original swimming pools, both of them. The Royal Observer Corps lookout post, missed that one. We could have talked about the feast week supper, working on the farm or the railways. The village today, the many clubs, for example, the relaxing atmosphere at the Bowls Club. Or life in the fast lane with the motorbike club. Every year they take Easter eggs to a local children's respite home. But all good things must come to an end, and as far as sort, hold on, it's not that guy with the dune buggy again. But what's Herbert doing? Oh well, that's progress. There was a cannon emplacement to guard the A1. I mean, oh, sorry, A1. What did they say? It weren't the A1, it was the Great North Road. Sorry. The trouble we've got is churchyard and graveyard, you see, because I will be picked up on that if I get it wrong. Really? What's the difference? Because a churchyard belongs to the church and directly adjoins the church, a graveyard is, in fact, what belongs to the parish council. And it won't surprise me, in years to come, you'll be able to put two pound coin or euro in the slot, pull the beer yourself. It wouldn't surprise me that don't happen. Happen that though. One of the things I could change, the parking outside the co-op, yeah, I'd change that, yeah, definitely. I'd have, I'd, if I could sort of have a wish and, and, and sort of change the parking outside the co-op, probably that's one. He bequeathed the land to sort, oh sorry, done it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> How as bad as the blinking kids? The Dean's family were once large landowners. Oh. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I can't get it into my head. Village life is different to the, to the big town where people don't know each other. Here, we all used to pride ourselves on knowing who was uh, at the end of the street and in the next street. And I think that helped a lot. Um, but we, we should never lose sight of the fact that uh, we live in a village and that's different to a big town.